Hey everyone, welcome back. Mike here again with another lesson for Guitar World. This lesson we're going to be looking at polyrhythms. Everyone loves a good polyrhythm because polyrhythms in the context of a solo guitar piece can add a really interesting uh, effect, a really interesting atmosphere, a hypnotic perspective to a piece of music. And um, I enjoy working with polyrhythms a lot. Um, they're, they're littered throughout all of my uh, album, my, throughout my What Just Happened album, as well as the album that I'm currently writing, which will be released at the end of this year. But um, we're going to look at an extract now to demonstrate this, an extract from a song of mine called The Impossible, which uh, a lot of you uh, write about and have been asking about these, these polyrhythms. Now, first of all, let's dial it back. For those of you that aren't aware, aren't aware of what a polyrhythm is, let me explain it. Um, poly, meaning more than one, of rhythm. <laughs> Um, imagine a time signature, 4-4, four, four. okay, four beats in a bar. Let's throw another one in there, 3-4. Let's put them together, we play them at the same time. Pass the goddamn butter, the oldest polyrhythm in the world. The act of stacking two rhythms on top of each other um, creates this, this really, really cool effect that I like. And when we apply that to a, the context of a solo guitar piece uh, and we add music and notation, we get some really interesting harmonies. Not just, not just really interesting harmonies played together, but um, repeated patterns that never quite uh, synchronize until the two rhythms uh, become one again. So first of all, I'll, I'll demonstrate these two separate parts that I'd like you to practice. And then we're going to learn to play them together. And then I'll explain how they work together and the theory behind it and how you can apply this technique to your own music. Okay. So first of all, I'd like to look at, let's say the left hand. Okay. This extract is in dadgad tuning uh, and we have a partial capo on fret four. So we're capoed on fret four all the way up to the top string, but the top string is open. So to, we're already creating this really moody, dark, somber atmosphere with this song. This hand is playing in a pattern of 12-8, okay? 12 beats, like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So practice that just with one hand. It's also a good way to build up strength and an even dynamic in one hand. So we're hammering on, two hammers, three hammers with the pinky this time, a little bit tricky. Then we pull off the pinky, then we hammer the pinky down onto the A string, and then finally we pull off uh, that bottom string which has remained hammered the whole time. Okay, So a nice little pattern there, nice and somber uh, melody. But when uh, you play that a second time, instead of pulling off on the bass string, you're going to pull off to reveal this note here, okay, fretted with the second finger. So the first two bars of 12. Okay, you see I caught a little ghost note in the form of that string as well, and that's quite okay. I won't uh, be mad. Once we've done those two bars, we're gonna move up all the way up to here. The true fret would be the ninth fret. When we're talking about partial capoed notation, often we refer to the true fret rather than the capoed fret um, because we have at least one string that has a true zero. Okay, so for the purposes of this demonstration, I will be saying that this is fret five and this is fret nine. Okay, this pattern of 12 sounds like this. same pattern twice. Here we have hammer, 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 but then we're going to slide down to 11, then pull off to zero, or to, to four, and then pull off both uh, bass notes as well. So that pattern of 12 sounds like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. and we just keep repeating that round and round, okay? So get used to that. Now this hand is gonna be providing a different rhythm. This, time, this hand is playing in a pattern of five, okay? And it's all open. Well, capoed, partially, open. 
is picking this pattern here. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, 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 P, I, P, M, I. Okay. Now play them together. Now, let me break down exactly what's going on there, okay? A few extra things as well. Now, the polyrhythm, the 5 and 12 going together, got all the way through its cycle and then started again, and then completed part of its second cycle. Now, what I mean by a cycle is when it all meets up again at the end. Now, when you have time signature X, so we'll say this is the 12 time signature, time signature X, you play that Y times, to synchronize with time signature y, let's say 5, that is played x times. For example, this 12 has to be played 5 times for 5 bars of 12 before it synchronizes with the pattern of 5 that has to be played 12 times. Okay. So, what I would like you to do is to watch this hand, okay, this pattern of 5. I will watch this hand, the pattern of 12. I will play this pattern of 12 five times, and you keep an eye and you count this 12 times. If you do it correctly, and if I do it correctly, I'm going to stop playing when you get to the one, to, to, to the sync up, okay? So here we go. And just to be confusing, I'm going to count it in in 4 4. Here we go. <laughs> one, two, three, four. I see Andy off here in the side nodding, so I think we got that right, okay? So that is how um, a full cycle a polyrhythm can work to create an interesting hypnotic effect in the context of a piece of music with melody, because the harmonies are never the same until it meets up again. Now, when I played that in the piece of music, once it meets up again, uh, some of you may have noticed, I'm changing my technique in this hand to march over the strings um, as I pick the following note, the previous note gets muted, okay? This is a very important technique to learn in order to have full control over the length of any melody note that you will play in any song. When I do that in the piece of music, that is my signal to myself that I have completed one cycle of this polyrhythm. The only other thing that I threw in that was a little bit different, just to signal the end of the section in the actual song itself, is a little, uh, a little past the goddamn butter, a little three over four at the end. Here I'm playing this chord, just the bass string, strumming that with the outside of my index fingernail with a kick drum, and then as it slides up, slapping the harmonics, paying special attention to that A string just there on true fret 16. Okay, and then the song continues. You can find more about that in the tab or on the app for that song. So thanks guys, I hope you enjoy that, polyrhythm lesson number one. Next month we'll be looking at some more polyrhythms, uh, some other extracts from this song as well as another song as well that, uh, that will help you enhance your music, make it hypnotic and confuse your neighbours and scare your dog. Enjoy.